Hi there, I'm Helen Mabel. I'm an artist and today we are going to be doing a speed draw, draw with me kind of video. So let's just get into it. All right, so I'm just gonna talk about my general idea for this piece since I find the whole sketching process a little boring to watch. So for this piece, I really was going for a kind of fall, just a cozy, vibey piece. And that was my original idea, but I actually ended up going down a little bit of a spooky route, not like spooky spooky, but like cozy spooky, you know? So I ended up drawing this witch and I had this idea that I really wanted her to be like collecting something in the woods, just going for like a really chill, cozy walk with her ghost cat and collecting some twigs or mushrooms or something. And the ghost cat, you know, that ended up being a little difficult, but we could talk about that later. I actually really like the concept that I came up with for this piece and yeah, it wasn't really what I was originally sitting down to draw, but I think it's really fun. It might be a little early for Halloween, but you know what? I, I don't care. <laughs> I see so many people this year already decorating for Halloween. Like as soon as September started, I saw Halloween decorations everywhere and like all over social media. It's just, everybody is just so ready for Halloween this year. And honestly, I am too. Just, just bring the Halloween, please. That's just what this piece is sort of about. It's just me wanting it to be Halloween already and wanting it to be October because October is the best month in my opinion. The weather is perfect and the trees are beautiful. I mean, who does not love fall? If you do not love fall, Feel free to unsubscribe because fall is the best season and there was there's there's no argument there so sorry <laughs> i actually specifically found a kind of fall themed color scheme for this piece because i just wanted something that would be really cohesive rather than trying to come up with my own if you are ever struggling with colors i just highly suggest you look on pinterest for color schemes there are so many and procreate actually has a pretty cool feature where you can just insert a photo and it will automatically use the colors in that photo and turn it into a color palette for you and i didn't know about that feature for the longest time and i just i really wish i knew about it sooner because i would just go and like select every color and like manually add it into the color scheme and that was just a lot more work than it needed to be. Anyway, I just really like the color palette that I ended up using for this piece and if I remember I will leave a link to the image that I got from Pinterest below because it's a great color scheme. I recommend everyone using it for their fall themed drawings. I did struggle a little bit with coming up with the composition for this piece. I used a very similar composition to a drawing that I actually do have another draw with me video of um, where I did a winter scene with like the trees and the bushes in the foreground and then a forest in the background with kind of the scene going on in the middle. I basically just copied that same exact composition, but I ended up changing it just a little bit and trying to give it a little bit more depth by kind of putting the path at a bit more of an angle rather than just looking straight through. I'm trying to work on creating more interesting compositions, and if I'm being honest, I wasn't that concerned or I didn't put that much effort into this composition and the background and everything that was going on. I like how it turned out, but I do think it could have been more impactful if I really gave it a lot of thought. Most of my comments on Instagram on my drawings seem to be complimenting the textures that I use in my illustrations. So I will be leaving a link down below to the brush pack that I purchased from Etsy if you are curious. Um, the brush that I use the most often in this pack is one of the grunge brushes. I don't remember what it's exactly called at this moment, but it is my favorite. It's just a general 
texture, you know, it doesn't look like anything too specific, but it just really gives the drawing this really nice texture. I don't know how else to describe it, but I just really love texture in digital illustrations. Um, one of the techniques I kind of used to develop my own style was studying just all of the illustrations that I really loved and just looking really closely at them to figure out what it was that I loved about them. And the thing that they all had in common was a lot of texture. So that's just kind of how I have picked that up in my style. And I've honestly looked at so many different brush packs and all kinds of texture packs. And, you know, they're not that different from each other. Just find one that you really like. And one that I would recommend is more simple. The brush pack that I got does have a lot of textures that resemble lots of real life things, like some fabric, like linen or denim and gravel and things like that. And I tend to not use those as often. I just like the ones that are just kind of a general rough texture like like cold pressed paper would be anyway i feel like i've been rambling on for texture for like five minutes now so let's get back to the drawing so for this piece i did use a drawing one of the drawing pencils that comes with procreate and i like to use this over my drawings to uh give it more texture sorry we're still talking about texture <laughs> Um, but I do this and I use it kind of like how I would use a colored pencil um, with traditional medium and I just go over very lightly, just add some shading or some texture and give the, just the whole illustration a little more interest. And what I like to do is then take this layer, I usually do it all on one layer just to kind of minimize my amount of layers because I can definitely go up to a very high number of layers if I let myself and that's just hard to keep track of. Anyway, what I tend to do with this layer is lower the opacity and it depends on the drawing, it depends how dark I've used the colors on this layer, but I will lower it. Um, probably around 50% or 75% to give it a little more just like a see-through effect and make it a little softer and make it look a little more realistic as, like if it were done traditionally and that's just something that I prefer to do but I don't know that anybody else does that I don't know why I do that rather than just drawing it the way I would like it to look I don't know, for some reason I think it makes a difference. Okay, so at this point in the drawing I was actually really struggling with my ghost cat and I almost gave up and just drew a plain black cat, but as you can see I went back to the ghost cat idea because I just thought it was so cute and I really really wanted to do it. So I did some more research on cats and ghost cats. I actually googled ghost cat to see if I could find a good example to kind of base mine off of and I didn't really see anything too specific. I just kind of experimented a little more with the style of it and I finally found one that I liked. It can really take a long time for me to actually like what I'm drawing sometimes. Like I just, with this piece, after the first few hours of drawing it, before I added all the details, I just really wasn't feeling it. I wasn't happy with it. I was tired. So I went to bed. I left it and I went to bed and I came back the next day. I changed some of the colors around. Like as you can see, I had changed her dress color and changed a lot of the colors in the piece really and fixed that ghost cat for one thing. But after adding more details and textures and everything, I just ended up really liking it. So it just goes to show that sometimes, you know, what do they say? Trust the process, that's it. You just gotta trust the process. Really, I should listen to my own advice on that one because I really don't trust the process enough and I just get so frustrated sometimes and I just want to quit all of art. I just never want to draw again because I think that I am just a terrible artist. But sometimes, you know, you just need to go to bed <laughs> and you just need to like not look at your artwork for a while, come back to it, assess what you don't like about it and then change those things. I don't know. I <laughs> I feel like I don't know how to give good advice here, but if you're an artist, just 
you know, sometimes you just need a nap. So if you didn't know this, I'm going to share this information with you because I only found this out sort of recently. You can actually find out how long you've been working on a piece in Procreate if you go under Canvas Information and then go to the bottom and look at Statistics. Procreate will tell you your tracked time for the piece, and I don't know whether this is only time when your pen is actually touching the screen, or if this is your total amount of time with the project open. I'm assuming that it's when your pen is actually touching the screen, because the total time for this project says that it was 6 hours, and I feel like I actually spent more time than that. And I am using my pen on the screen for most of that time, but there was a lot of time that, you know, I was just sitting there and thinking about it or zooming in and out. Um, and I don't think it counts that. So it was probably more like seven or eight hours for this piece. But I think that that time did end up being worth it because I am really happy with how the piece turned out. I actually like it so much that I might turn it into an art print, so let me know if you would be interested in that in the comments below. Also let me know if you know about any fall art challenges or if you just have any cool ideas for illustrations because now I am in the mood to make some more fall themed art. Well, that about wraps up this video. Please let me know down below if you really like this style video, this kind of draw with me type of video. I want to give you the types of videos that you want to see from me. So just let me know if you really like this one or if you hate this kind of video or what you would just like to see from me in the future. I really hope you didn't hate this video, but um, I guess I accept constructive criticism. So yeah. If you would like to see some sneak peeks of upcoming content, you can follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Helen Mabel Makes. And if you want to see more creative content from me, you can subscribe and ring that bell so that you can get notifications whenever I put out a new video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye!